far as the law. It's not intended for me. Now, can I get spiritual truths out of that? Absolutely. Can I get spiritual truths out of Hebrews to Jude? Absolutely. Doctrinally, though, it's not intended for me. It talks about you know, having faith in the works for salvation. That's got nothing to do with the church age. Rightly dividing the word of truth. There's knowledge, which are facts, information. There is wisdom, which is how to apply the facts. And then there is understanding, which is when to apply those facts. And those are the basic fundamentals of understanding the Word of God. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. They're coming down the home stretch. 2 Peter 1. Pick up verse 19 through 21. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Okay. Before this, he's talking about God speaking directly to them. Okay. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation okay you take scripture for what it says unless within it you know for example sentence structure and so forth it indicates that it's to be taken some other way okay for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man no man didn't write it he was just the one who wrote it down but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Inspiration. Okay? So your preferences don't matter. Preferences have no place. Preferences have no power. Okay? What saith the scripture? Okay? Good example. Speaking of John Calvin. Okay? John Calvin comes along 1,500 years after the Apostle Paul received divine revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ for the church. <laughs> 1,500 years he comes along. Okay. And all of a sudden now, Paul's divine revelation, the chosen apostle to the Gentiles, is wrong. And John Calvin is right. How'd that happen? Okay. The Lord forget to give uh, the, those little tidbits to Paul in the Arabian Desert? You know, or, or was Paul just not paying attention? You know, and so for 1,500 years, Bible-believing Christians were wrong in their doctrine of salvation by grace through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ by their individual will and choice offered as a free gift of God? That's stupid. So along comes somebody you know, in 2000, whatever, you know, and wants to argue a doctrine that has been a solid, unquestionable, biblical, clear doctrine since Paul received it 2000 years ago. And what? Okay, everybody's been ignorant and had nothing revealed to them for 2,000 years? You know, you're, you're now the divine? Last point. And it's the last argument that, last chance they'd have to defend their unbiblical positions is, well then, just keep lying to me because the truth hurts too much. 
<laughs> what it is, Revelation chapter 3, just keep lying to me. You know? Don't confuse me with the facts. I don't like the truth hurts too much. Revelation 3, 14 through 19. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things, saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot, I would, thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, excuse me, I am wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And we could go on down through the rest of this, but I mean, what damning verses they are. Coming from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He speaks them directly to the lukewarm, half-hearted, comfortable, Laodicean church of today. But you don't believe them? Why, Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. You know, well, I, I, I can't understand the Bible, especially that archaic King James Bible. Uh -huh. I'm too busy to read, to study, to pray, you know, to go to church. I mean, there's no commandment in the Bible as to what day the church is to meet or how often. Man, there's a lot of things in the Bible that there's no specific commandment to. But, you know, to answer that one, because I heard that one recently, Hebrews 10.25, Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, so much the more as you see the day approaching, the day in the Bible, okay? So basic hermeneutics always refers to the day of Christ second come up. Gee, is that day approaching? Then we should be meeting all the more? Simple English to me. Now, if our Lord tells us and warns us that we are lukewarm, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, naked, as Bible-believing Christians, okay, we ought to accept what he says okay. and be aware of those things and guard against those specific those are the specific weaknesses of the Laodicean church age so those are the specific things we need to be guarding against okay. lie to me some more please because the truth is too painful I want to go on believing that I'm rich and increased in goods and that I have need of nothing, including biblical sound doctrine. Now, it's tough enough, brothers and sisters, battling the flesh and battling the world and battling the devil. You know, and let's face it, Paul is battling all those things, and you read his epistles, you find out he's battling the so-called Bible believers, too, who say they believe the Word of God, but don't. I mean, it's tough enough with all those things that we have to fight that we've got to fight, you know, this stuff that is snuck in unawares you know uh, well you know, I'm a Bible believer too but so there's no but there see that's what happens all the time you have the same it, through every process of every one of the ages of the New Testament church you have people of, well they are good godly men so we don't want to criticize them. Well, I'm sorry, okay? If you're if what you're saying goes against 
that. I mean, again, don't get mad at me. I didn't write it. I just happen to believe it. Okay, and if you're trying to push something that is contrary to what's in here, well, you know, but, you know, he's a good godly man, you know, you know, he, you know, he, he's a Bible believer, he's like, you know, this, that, so on, you know, I've, I've heard it all, you know, and I'm fed up with it all, I can't tell you, you know, uh, how many times I've come across this, you know, uh, pastor, oh, of course I believe the Bible. Yeah, yeah, I'll clarify that. By Bible, you mean the plenary originals? Let me see them. Trot them out. <laughs> you know? You don't have them. You know? you know? Or, you know, I forget what church it was. There's probably been others. You know, the inside the pulpit, there is a thing in there that says, from this pulpit, you can only preach the King James Bible. Not because they believe the King James Bible, because that's what people expected to hear. You know? You know, or if they will, you know, they hold a doctrinal position that they know real Bible believers stand against, like Calvinism. And they'll make a little mild reference to it, but they're not going to come right out and say where they stand and where they believe. Now, like I say, I'm talking about things that I have read and heard and said by so-called Bible-believing Baptists that just make me shake my head and wonder. You know? How can you take and put that title upon yourself when you're anything but? You know? Yea, hath God said. You know? Isn't there somebody out there that appears as an angel of one? You know, is it no wonder that his ministers appear, you know, as the ministers of God? You know, I thank God, you know, not having that problem here, you know, uh, among this congregation here. Uh, again, you know, as I say, thank God that, you know, through the you know, technology that we now have available to us, our reach goes much farther. And... We're going to be bumping heads with others who are out there, already have, <laughs> already have folks, uh, who are going to say, oh yes, we are, no you're not, quit lying to me, and the sky is not orange, I don't care what you tell me that, yeah. uh, and good sound doctrine for 2021 is the good, sane, sound doctrine, the same, no different, that Paul received from the Lord Jesus Christ almost 2,000 years ago out in the desert. Hasn't changed. Okay? Nobody's getting any new revelations. They're just like I was talking about John Calvin. You know, with this foolishness, what, for 1,500 years we didn't know the truth? For 1,500 years the Lord Jesus Christ forgot to tell us <laughs> you know, about the tulip theory? Mm -hmm. You know? But now you as a so-called Bible-believing Baptist are going to sit here and try and cram that down my throat? Shame on you, you liar. <laughs> Father, <coughs> Lord, we thank you for the simplicity of truth lord you preserved your words for us and we have them everyone can have them everyone can read them everyone can study them and everyone can do it with the guidance of the holy spirit of god lord i pray stop the mouths lord of these wolves and sheep's clothing stop the mouths lord of these hypocrites and corruptors of truth and lord jesus i pray come swiftly and i pray and ask it in your holy name amen <laughs>